What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great week. It is the weekend, and things are moving along really, really quickly. Um, one of the things I've noticed in my life is... As I get older, it seems like time goes by faster. And damn if it doesn't seem like this year has flown by. Usually the off season seems like it takes forever. Um, but we've got OTAs out of the way, the drafts out of the way, um, of course, free agencies out of the way. You know, the end of the season is out, you know, gone. We are literally halfway through the year. It is June in another hour and a half. And the Dallas Cowboys are right now ready to make moves. They are ready. More ready right now than at any other point this offseason. Now, that doesn't mean that they'll make any moves. But they're in the best position to make moves, other than, of course, the draft. And by this I mean because the Dallas Cowboys, um, to our chagrin, don't do anything early in free agency. And that's partially because, as Stephen Jones says, we believe in our own guys. We believe that we have some good players and that we believe that we don't necessarily have to go out and get blockbuster players. In some regard, you can understand some of that philosophy because, you know, we've let guys go and they, you know, literally said the Cowboys screwed up by letting go Randy Gregory. And lo and behold, Stephen Jones says, you know, Dorrance Armstrong's right there, you know, in production, and Dorrance Armstrong plays better than Randy Gregory. You know, we've let other guys go, like Lyle Collins, and we had Terrence Steele step up. And so the Cowboys actually have been good at developing players. They find Dak Prescott in the fourth round. They find Terrence Steele as an undrafted rookie free agent. You know, they find um, Deron Bland late in the draft in the fifth round and so on. Um, they find digs in the second round. And so they're not going out and getting that immediate punch because they missed on other players. You can look at the Eagles and say, yes, they got Devontae Smith, but they had Rhaegar that was there. They had Whiteside there. Um, uh, you know, they they missed on quite a few receivers that they had to go out and get themselves um, A.J. Brown. So it's... One of those things that because somebody makes a move, they think, oh, man, it's going to be a great move. But it doesn't always work out. Um, you can look at the uh, Kevin Bayard trade that they made. At the time, everybody's like, oh, my God, they got one of the best safeties in football. And it ended up blowing up in their face, and they did nothing. They got a guy, Robert Quinn, who had 18 sacks the year before. He comes there, doesn't bust the grape. But they do have successes as well. And even with all of that, the Cowboys, it's not like they go down the toilet. Now, things that the Cowboys have been successful with. One, last year you can look and say those fifth round trade picks that they did for Stephon Gilmore and for Brandon Cooks worked out pretty good. The Cowboys like to do things that they've done that have been successful with. They have... Um, three more fives and a six comp picks because they let go some of those guys. Now, the talking heads, of course, are telling you, well, you know, they let go valuable starters. You know, Biotish, of course, <coughs> he goes to your rival and gets a big check. That's a starter that you should have kept. Really? I know Biotis ended up being a pro bowler one year, but mainly because there's like five or six guys that said, nah, I ain't going. And eventually he got on the list. But I can't look and say that that's like an all pro player that we let go. And potentially you have a guy who is pretty good that you drafted. And you also have to look and say, we had a guy, Brock Hoffman, who started a couple games in his absence, who there was no letdown. If anything, you might say, he was as good, maybe even a little better. So it's not necessarily a move that looks bad. But now you have more money than you've had all offseason. 
Right now, you'll have $14 million here in another hour and a half. That's more money than you've had at any point this year. The peak was $8.9 million. And with that, we signed a rookie class. We ended up getting um, Zeke back. We got Eric Kendricks. And now, maybe the perfect time to go ahead and get those bargains that Stephen Jones likes. Teams have gone through, and they're beginning to feel the players that they want to keep, and they start to look and say, you know what, we've got more you know, defensive linemen than we think. And, you know, let, let's go ahead and get something for it. Maybe it's a veteran who, after the end of this year, becomes a free agent. And you look and say, he's probably not going to play that much. Maybe I can get myself a comp pick or, you know, a fifth-round pick or something, get that guy off my books and save some money, let the young guy go, and make a trade for somebody. And this is the chance for the Cowboys to kind of top things off. Because, you know, I look at this, because the thing that drives me crazy with the Cowboys is we're always pretty good. Anytime Dak Prescott has made it through the season, we've always been a winning team. Not everybody can say that. The thing is, we get to be thin in so many positions. Last year was linebacker. If you honestly do not look and say that the Cowboys' lack of linebackers, from losing Overshone, from losing then Leighton Van Der Esch, to literally playing nickel, co- I mean, uh, nickel coverage all the time because it was out of necessity, because you didn't have linebackers, you're playing safeties as linebackers, and think that you're going to be able to stop the run, then you don't really understand football. That was the flaw. Linebackers, we just got hit real hard at it, and the Cowboys just did not prepare for it. They've done something about that. I'm worried about the defensive line, which has always been our Achilles heel. I have hopes for Mozzie to step up and be a lot better than what he was. But I want an insurance policy. And this is where the Cowboys have an opportunity, getting a little bit of change, rattling around their pocket, and having extra picks. Because you're going to have more picks than you're going to have positions you're going to be able to fill next year. So why not use some of those now? So that's my thoughts on that. Um, I want to say a couple of things tonight during my live stream, which were really cool. One was seeing Randy, who was in a horrific accident. And when I say horrific, he's very lucky to be alive. When you have a head-on collision that they say that the crash point is at 150 miles an hour between the two vehicles head-on, not too many people walk away from that. And Randy is doing better. He still has a long ways to go. But to see him in the chat today was actually really amazing. And the other thing was, somebody said, I think it was Clouds Coffee said, you're rich, Mark Holmes. And I thought to myself, and I said, yeah. If experiences and friendship are rich, then I'm, I'm definitely rich because I have so many people and so many relationships that the journey for me in life, it's a beautiful thing. Money is great. Uh, you know, it's nice to have money, be able to buy things and all that. And so many people are so, con- you know, just, just spend all their time chasing money. They got more than enough money for themselves, but they're still chasing money that they miss out on the journey of life and those friendships and those memories. And so, yeah, I've got tons of those. Not a lot of money, but i got tons of great relationships. And with that being said, life is short and life is precious. And we need to make the most of all of it. And we need to make sure that the people we love know how we feel. I love you guys. Make sure you tell the people you love how you feel. Peace out. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow.